This is a diamond sword, and at the end of this video, you'll be able to do one just like this. But this video won't just be me making a sword. I'll be discussing how to navigate a texture pack folder, the best pack making software to use on any device, and so much more. Now, I know most of my audience is on a phone, so I've linked some good apps for both Android and iOS in the description. I personally use Paint.net. It's a free software that is incredibly versatile thanks to the tools and effects it has, and the plugins the community has created for it. Once you have a software, you can download a base pack I made in the description. It includes all the important textures you will need for this video and series, along with a lot of other helpful resources. For my Java viewers, this base pack is not available for Java. You can still just take a pack from your pack collection and use that as a base pack to work from. Alright, so with the base pack downloaded, you can go ahead and use an extractor, which will get you this folder. And then once you open this folder, you'll see that there's a lot of folders and a lot of files that may look very confusing, but trust me, it's really not that complicated. Everything you have to know for this video is that the pack icon is where you put, well, the icon of your pack. That could be a sword, a gapple, whatever. The manifest.json file, which is where you put your pack name and your pack description, and a UUID, which is what identifies your pack and makes it unique and makes it work when you try and inject it into Minecraft. The textures folder, that's where you'll find the blocks folder with all of the blocks and the items folder where you can find the golden apple, diamond sword, uh, ender pearl, etc. The other folders aren't important for this video, but you can go check them out if you want to. But now let's actually go ahead and make ourselves a sword. So I'm gonna go to the textures folder, go to the items folder and then open up my diamond sword. Then I'm gonna go to the useful resources folder and click on the 16x image right here that has a bunch of sword designs on it. Then go back again and click on color pods and open that image up. So now that we have everything open in paint.net, you wanna go ahead and get yourself some color palettes and you want to choose a sword design. So I've chosen this sword design right here, but this sword is way too long, so let me shorten this. I'm gonna go ahead and make another selection and move this blade down until I think it looks right. So this is perfectly fine. You can keep this design, but because I'm a weirdo, I often like to have shorter blades. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, once you're done, you can go ahead and get your color pad into the image as well. It's way easier to make a pack if you have the color pad in the same image as a sword. You can obviously later remove the color pad or move it to a different image. And for those wondering, I won't be teaching how to make a color pad in this video because I think the best way to learn pack making is to first start off with shading. And then once you've mastered shading, moving on to making your own color pads. The reason for that is because a good color pad won't save a bad shaded sword. A good sword starts with good shading and is then later enhanced by the color pad, which is why I've given you a bunch of color pads you can work and practice with on your own. So with that out of the way, let's get right to it. So I'm gonna click on K on my keyboard, or you can also go click the color picking tool right here and pick the brightest color, then P for the pencil or right here left to the color picker. And I'll paint the inside of the sword just like that. Then I'll go do the outline of the sword. Now that we have that sorted, we want to go ahead and shade the sword. Now for that, we have to think about lighting and how to light a sword. So I'm gonna draw an imaginary sun right about here. And this sun will help you decide which pixels have to be brighter and which pixels have to be darker. It'll basically influence most of your decisions when making any texture. So for starters, the sword will be the brightest to the area where the sun would reflect the most, so the top left. And it'll be darker the further down we go and the further right we go. So let me visually show how that would work. Let me get my second and my third color and I'm just gonna make a line right here and the line right here. And then the fourth color down here. Now this is sort of backwards with how most people would make a sword, but it'll give you a good visual example of what you should be doing when you're making a sword. And this is also exactly what you should be doing with the outline of the sword. So I'm gonna get the fourth color and the fifth color because I like having three colors for the outline and I'm gonna do the exact same I just did. So there you go, I just did the exact same thing I did with the inside of the blade on the outside. And now what you want to do is you want to go make an inline. So for those wondering what an inline is, it's the middle line going through the sword. Now I've made the inline go through the entire sword, but what you see for most packs is that the inline actually stops right about here. Now this inline is way too harsh. It's just one color, so I'm gonna apply the exact same shading I did with the edge and the inside of the sword to the inline. Now ideally what you want is for the inline to always be one color darker than the two surrounding colors. So as an example right here, you have the brightest color on the left and you have the second brightest color on the right. So what you don't want to do is choose the second brightest color and put that there, that doesn't work. So let me go ahead and try the fifth color. Okay, that's a bit better than what we previously had, but I think it could be even better. Let's try the fourth one. All right, not bad. Let's try the third one. There we go. This is what I would say is ideal. Now let's try the exact same thing for the bottom row. So we have the second color and the third color right here. So 
Do we want to use the fifth color? No, we want to use the fourth color. Now again, if you want, you can go ahead and do this like most swords, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this because I'm unique. <laughs> Now the sword is basically done. A pack maker would probably change some pixels like here and here out of intuition, but this is also perfectly fine. Now here's where I'll quickly add some other swords to show where shading can go wrong. So this sword right here is way too bright. It's not using enough colors in the right place. So for example, if I remove the inline, you can see that there's just two colors inside of the blade, which is way too little. And if I just show the inline, you can see that there's just two colors in the inline. And even your outline, while it's using three colors, it's using them in the wrong place. So you're using your brighter outline color way too much. In the next sword, you can see the opposite problem. This sword is way too dark. It's using way too many dark colors in the wrong places. So if I just show the inside of the sword, you can see that it skips the second color completely. It jumps from the brightest color to the third color while just ignoring the second brightest color. And there's also a problem with the outline. The darkest color is covering the entire right side of the sword and the brightest color is not used nearly as much as it should be. Now, if you move to the last sword, you can see what happens when you just don't make the outline at all. And I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. There's a lot of places where you can mess up with a sword. You have to just make sure you're following your lighting and that you're always going from bright to dark, but not too quick and not too slow. All right, now that we're done with the blade of the sword, I'm going to be moving to the bottom half of the sword, which is split into three parts. So you have the cross card, which is this section right here, right under the blade. You have the handle, which is this brown part, and the pommel, which is at the bottom of every sword. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing we did earlier. I'm going to put my sun right about here, and I'm going to be doing the inside line and the outline. And now we're going to be doing the same thing we did for the blade. So I'm going to take my second and my third color. I'm going to make this pixel darker. So this is a second color. This pixel, I'm going to make the third color. And then this pixel will be the fourth color. And this pixel will not be the fifth color. Now, the reason why this pixel won't be the fifth color is because uh, symmetry is very important for most swords. Now, this is not always true. You'll see some sword designs that don't have any symmetry. So symmetry is when both sides have uh, the exact same design. But for this sword, it would look better if you have this going on where it goes from the third brightest color to the fourth color and then back to the third color. And now we'll do the exact same lighting for the outline of the cross guard. So I'm going to take my fourth color and do this right here. I'm going to take my fifth color and do this. And I'm going to keep the right half of the cross guard the last color for now. And here we're just going to look at these two colors right here and move down with them into the handle part. So here's where some people will maybe make this into a diamond color or maybe make this into uh, a wood color. But for my swords, I usually just make this the same color as a cross guard and the same thing goes for the pommel so you could make this a diamond color or maybe a brown or, or you do something really funky here but i'm just gonna leave this the same color as the cross guard so i just took these two colors and followed their lines down until they met right here and then for the inside line of the handle and the pommel i just went with the same color as here but to make it interesting what i often like to do is i like to change every second pixel to a brighter or a darker color now this cross guard handle and pommel could be fine but if you want to be a bit more advanced I'm going to be removing this sun and I'm going to remove the sun right here and I'm going to refer back to my original sun so in order to do that I'm going to be lifting uh, these colors up here just a tiny bit I'm going to make this color right here go down the sword just a tiny bit to match with where the sun is coming from and then do the exact same for the other side so instead of just having the last color dominate this entire right side I'm going to take the fifth color and put it right here and right now the cross guard isn't very symmetrical because of the changes I've made. So I'm going to make it symmetrical again, just like that. Now this is where you could end off. This is a perfectly fine design, but I'm going to do some tinkering on my own and change this design a little bit to match with what I want to do with this pack. Now with the sword done, I want to quickly show you where you can take a sword like this, because this is definitely not the only design you could be doing with this style. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different ways you can go with this type of sword. There's a lot of different designs you can do. There's a lot of different designs that may fit your pack better or that you may personally like more. Pack making is all about trying stuff that works and doesn't work that you like and that you don't like. And I don't want you leaving this video thinking there's only one type of sword to do. All of these swords were made with the same principles that I've mentioned with this sword. There's some other principles like for example incorporating some blue into the, the, the handle or into the cross guard or into the pommel. But all of that still follows the same lighting and shading rules as the original sword. All right, so the sword done, the last thing you want to do is you want to go open up the manifest and you want to change the UUID 
you want to change the pack name and you want to add a pack description. So the first thing you want to do is the UUID. This right here is the site. What you want is a version four UUID, not a version one UUID, you want a version four UUID. So let's go ahead and generate a version four UUID. And this is what we have right here. A UUID is basically just a random set of numbers and letters as you can see right here. And it's what makes your pack unique. So this will make sure that your pack won't have any problems once you add it into Minecraft. So once we have our UUID, let's open back up our manifest and we're going to paste it right here where it says paste to UID here. So I'm gonna paste that there. Now I need another one. Now once I have that copied, I'm gonna go down here uh, and click on paste to UID here. There we go. And now for the pack name, uh, we'll do uh, ice. 16x. There's also an image in the useful resources folder that shows how you can change uh, the color of the text. And for the description, you can just do made by or you can put your YouTube channel or whatever. I'm just going to do uh, made by uh, me. <laughs> now with that done, you can save the file and then MC pack the file. So we want to select all of the folders. Then we want to either go to 7-zip or we want to add an archive on the on the WinRAR icon. I prefer to use 7-zip, so I'm just going to click on Add to Archive right here. And then I want to change the zip uh, at the end to MC Pack. Uh, you have to make sure the file format is zip, not 7-zip. And you have to make sure this is zip crypto, not, not, not the, this weird number thing at the bottom. Uh, so with that all cleared up, just click on OK. And it's going to make an MC Pack. It should have a Minecraft icon just like that. And you just double click that and it'll inject into Minecraft and uh, you're good to go. And there we go, that was it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you learned something in the comments below. And if you want to watch another video, there'll be one on screen right now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.